Good afternoon. So today we're going to do a watercolour lesson and we're going to paint a countryside scene. So here is the painting. So this is what we're going to paint. There's basically five stages to this painting. First, we've got this beautiful glowing sky and I will show you how to make a really vibrant glowing sky. Next, we're going to have soft mountains. That's stage two. And I will show you how to make these soft edges. Then thirdly, we're going to do this rice field. And I'm going to show you how to get this lovely texture. And then the fourth stage is going to be this mid distance area with these trees and houses. And I'm going to show you how to get these lovely edges on the trees. And then the fifth stage, the very final thing, is when we use a little bit of white paint to get this rim lighting effect. So, first of all though, you need to know about materials. So here we go. So for this painting, you only need three brushes. Yes, just three brushes. So you need a mop like this. So I think that's about a centimetre, maybe a centimetre and a half in, um, what is it, diameter here. So yeah, it's not, it's not so big. And then um, you need a pointed oval. I recommend a pointed oval. Some people call it a cat's tongue. And that's about one centimetre in diameter. Yeah, so not very big. And then finally, you need a liner brush, or some people say a rigger, because maybe they use it for painting rigger. So mine's quite old. It's seen a lot of action. And uh, so the hairs are, yeah, quite split. So maybe I need to buy a new one of those. So those are the brushes. Now for the paints. So paints. So we are only going to use six paints, just six. So this is all very simple. Um, the first one is this yellow. It's called a midazolone yellow, I think. I don't know how you pronounce it. But all my paints are permanent. So that does affect which colours I choose. And a very important point is you don't have to have exactly the same paints as me. So if you've got a yellow, then that should do. Hopefully, if it's a fairly pure yellow, not an orangey yellow or a greeny yellow, yeah, it should be fine. OK, next I've got my maybe my favourite colour, yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. So, uh, yeah, in a future video, I'll tell you why. But I use this a lot, so much. Look, it's almost empty. So yellow ochre, then permanent alizarin crimson. So I love this colour. I think it's a cool red, but it's, um, yeah, it's a really lovely colour, a beautiful colour. Then I use phthalo blue. So if you've got ultramarine blue, that's fine. But the reason I choose phthalo blue, it's not for the name, which is a very strange name, but I use it because it's a very powerful blue. It's a very, very powerful blue, and I like that. It's good for making darks, dark colours. Then I've got a light blue, and that's cobalt turquoise light. So maybe I'll just call that turquoise, yeah. And finally, I've got some titanium white. And so this painting was made from just six colours. But I've got my primaries, right? I've got my reds, well, red. I've got my yellows and I've got my blues. And then I've got my white just for a few highlights. And I do recommend using white because 
it just makes the whole process so much easier and especially for beginners I suppose but also it just looks very very good so that's the paints and below there will be a materials list well a link to a materials list and there you can find everything else but it's basically just water bucket palette rag paper so here's my paper and how big is this just a minute i can never remember i can never remember so i normally paint on a fairly small size so this is 20 no 30 about 34 centimeters by by 24 centimeters 34 centimeters by 24 centimeters so i think it's about like what is that in inches i don't know maybe 12 by 7 inches something like that i don't know i'm not very good at mathematics but it's uh, just a minute four eight twelve yeah about 12 by four yeah it's about 12 by 8 inches so 34 by 24 centimeters so that's the size paper i'm using and i do use a spiral bound pad so here we go i use a spiral bound pad like this these are my favorite with clips at the bottom so i don't want to go into too much detail about that and um, next let's have a look at the actual scene that i will be painting from so um the place the place is called akitsuki and um, i went to akitsuki in 2020 the autumn of 2020 and um, it was a family trip and um, it was a beautiful sunny day and at the end of the day my wife and my daughter were playing in a park and i wandered around the rice fields and i just came across this really beautiful scene and um, just the atmosphere was lovely it was very balmy day like perfect temperature bright and but at the same time it was um, there were those hints of autumn coming and there was a mild feeling and probably the sound of insects so it was very very beautiful place and uh, I took a photo and then later did a painting and this year I'm I'm painting it again and I sometimes do that with scenes that really have a big impact on me um, so this is one of those scenes oh and I should say Akitsuki is in Fukuoka prefecture Japan so yeah okay so let's get on then with the painting and have some fun okay so we're ready to paint but uh, a few things first just in case so number one layout of materials is so important so please arrange your equipment like this so paper here then up here i have my tissue that's a good place to one side is okay then here water and rag do not have your water above your paper because the chance of you when you put your brush in the water and then bring it over back down the chance of water dripping off your brush onto your paper is very high and my students are often doing that so it just means you you've got less chance of doing a good painting it's basic sabotage so have a good layout water to one side and then rag next to it and then palette here make sure there's plenty of paint in your palette and you also need a spray bottle and make sure 
the, pra the paint is wet. It has to be wet. That's very important. So I've got my brushes here as well. So everything's ready for painting. And I've got my picture. So um, hopefully there'll be a link below where you can um, download this picture. So hopefully I'll do that. And uh, I recommend you print it out and then use it as a reference guide. So the first thing we're going to do is a glowing sky. So I'm using my mop brush. Let's just wash it out, dab it. I get some yellow ochre. And uh, fairly watery. And I'm going to have it about here. So no drawing is needed for this, this picture. There we go. So you begin out and you go in and leave a white space. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle at all. And then we just go around like that. And then up and down like that. So my horizon line is going to be about the halfway point. And I'm using the mop brush because it covers a lot of space very quickly, which is what I need here. And then I get some water, I dab it on my rag, that's very important. And then I go across the bottom to stop getting a hard line. Now the brush is very wet, so dab it again, just a little, not super dry. And again, now I'm going to dab it quite hard to get rid of this pool of paint here. We don't want that. Okay, next, get some alizarin crimson, pure alizarin crimson, begin here at the edge, and then slowly work in. And what happens is it begins to blend with the yellow ochre and you get a lovely orange. So that's a bit too strong. So I dab on my rag. And there we go. And that's how you get a really beautiful glowing sky. We're mixing on the paper rather than in the palette. And so we're getting a purer mix. And what we can do as well is clean my brush. We can get some phthalo blue, not too much not too wet, just dab it. And then here we can do a bit of blue. Now you might not want to do this because it's, dab it a bit more, it's too strong. It's a bit overpowering and you might not like that. I, I like it a lot. Okay, wash this out, dab it. Okay. Dab it. So I noticed that beginners don't use their rag enough. So you really need to use your rag a lot. It's very, very important. And that will do. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So now, and can you imagine if my water bottle container was here and when I brought the brush over the paper, it dripping, there's a high chance it will happen 
it would just destroy that, wouldn't it? Okay, so it's it's drying out and I just want to go down here with a yellow. So I have to be careful because it is drying out. I'm going to dab my brush so it's not too wet because if it's really wet when it touches this paint here, it might create a cauliflower and we don't want that. Although we can hide it later. In fact, it has created a little bit of one. But it's not too bad. Dab, dab, dab. And let's just erase that. There we go, that will do. Okay, let's continue down. And you just have to be careful that you're not too loose with the brush and uh, you're flicking paint around because if you get wet paint here, it's going to cause a small cauliflower. Okay, just do here and then that's it. So let's leave this now to dry. So we're off to a good start and what I'm going to do is take a photo of this and then you can pause and then you can use that as a reference because it's probably best to watch me do it first then to pause the video and copy what I've done. I think that that works best but you decide. Let's leave it to dry. So now we're going to do the uh, mountains and we're going to do hopefully mountains with soft edges, soft ridges. So this is tricky and um, timing is the most important thing. So get your mop brush and then dab it. Actually, if you've got a very wide flat brush, that would be better because you don't want to go over the same part of the paper too many times because there's a big risk of um, shifting the paint underneath. So I'm trying to do this very gently. And uh, maybe this way might even be better. Because I might have been picking up a bit of that blue paint. So yeah, a wide flat brush would be better to do this and then do it in one go have to be very very careful. In lighter areas it's not so important but in the darker areas here it's, um, it's a big deal about shifting paint around. Okay and then I'm dabbing my brush on the rag and I'm just soaking up pools of wet paint because they might give me cauliflowers. Okay. Oh, and can you see that paint there? So that's what I picked up. So it is picking up paint. Okay, so we can always fix that later if it's streaky or anything. So now it's a case of just waiting so that this dries a little. And to do the mountains, I'm going to use this brush and I've got some time now to make my mix. 
So what I need is some of this phthalo blue, maybe here. Normally I do my dark colours here and my light ones here. So a fairly thick mix, phthalo blue, a touch of alizarin crimson. Ooh, that's not a touch. Maybe that's okay. So I've got a purple now and then a touch of yellow ochre. A bit more. This will gray it off. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's slowly beginning to gray off. Okay, so let's test it. It feels like the mixture is still a bit thick. Okay, here we go then. So I should have just dabbed it first and then I need to watch the, um, the edge of the paint. And it's moving, but maybe not too much. So I think we can get away with that. Now what we can do is another colour here, like a, a yellow ochre and a bit of red to make it brown. But you don't have to do that because that's maybe making it a bit too difficult. So you can just continue like this. And that's fine. But this colour at the top is spreading a bit more than I want it to. So, but here at the bottom, it's actually a bit too dry. So... I'm going back up there, but I'm just giving it a little bit of time to dry out. It's not too bad. Use my rag, so this is quite not too watery. Because the more watery it is, then the more it's going to spread. Okay. And maybe I've done it a bit too strong, but there you go. It will fade as it dries out. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do that colour thing. So I, I wash my brush out, wipe it on the rag, touch of yellow ochre, touch of red so I've got this warm orangey colour and just below the sun I'm going to paint this and I am picking up the grey paint underneath so every now and again I wipe it on my rag so do use your rag and then that cleans it it cleans it enough, right? And then I do it again. And can you see that little touch of orange glow now that I've got on the top of the mountain? So I think that's quite nice. Okay, so now we're ready for an even darker mountain that's closer up. So, so hopefully I can make this darker. So get my blue, get my red, get my yellow ochre. So three colors and they're kind of primary colors. Yellow ochre is a bit more towards the brown, but it still acts as a yellow. And let's see if we can make this work. In fact, I'm going to make it greeny. So a greeny colour is going to be mostly 
blue and yellow ochre with a touch of green, right? So I just increase the blue and the yellow ochre and it's going to become greenish. So let's begin over here. It's dried up here, but, but that's not too bad because Closer up objects are not going to be quite so soft, so not too bad. And then let's do over here. And first of all, you can do just a line like that, yeah? At first, make it easy for yourself, just a simple line. Oh, you have to be careful because of splatter. Later, maybe we can turn that into a bird, but I'm not going to touch it at the moment. And then what we do, make sure this mix is not watery, so dab my brush, is we can go up and down, up and down, but you need to make it irregular, yeah? It can't be too similar, otherwise it doesn't look natural. And sometimes it's a bit wide like that, so maybe that's a normal tree, and here we've got like a fir tree something like that and here the same but this is fading here because it's so wet so that's not quite so important yeah and it's actually quite wet there i think that will work though and over here, I think that's... Okay. Yeah, and I think that, that looks pretty good. So, Maybe I should soften this line though. I think maybe I should soften that. It'd be a good idea, but it's quite nice. We've got a, a bit of a line, a bit of ugliness here, but we can improve that later, I think. So, wet my brush, dry it, then go under here. Eww. And then, Again, get some tissue. Just dab the brush on the tissue. And again. Just soften it. Okay, I think that will do. Use the rag, use my tissue and hopefully lift up some of this grey. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And let's leave that now to dry. So, I'll have a photo as a reference so you can pause and then copy what I've done. Okay, so it has dried now and I'm going to try and correct this first of all. Now I should use a wide flat brush, but I said I was only using three brushes, so 
<laughs> I'm going to stick to that. So I'm wetting it. I don't want to go too far down. Then dab on the rag and then mopping up that water, pools of water. Then getting my uh, pointed oval, phthalo blue, bit of a thickish mix. And fingers crossed. In fact, I could take this off. That might be a good time. And then I'll get a really thick mix. Dab the rag. Okay. And I'm just going to go up and down there a few times because I'm getting that white bit painted blue. Just go over the top again. Use my rag because it's wetter than I want it to be. And then, this is very delicate work. And you have to be careful that you don't take too long and it dries out because then you'll have a hard edge. But I think that's enough. I don't really want to go down here because I might start to touch this and then I might start to shift paint down there. And you have to be really careful when the colours get dark and thick. This is not a technique you can use in that situation, I think. So um, there we go. Let's leave that to dry now. And I think that looks quite nice. So the next thing we're going to do is the field. And so we're going to use some amidazoline yellow. I wish I could call it just lemon yellow or something, but it's not lemon yellow. Okay. And um, it's a bit hard, this yellow. I don't know why. It could be just the nature of the um, chemical substance, yeah? It just goes very hard. So I don't like that because it's difficult to get the paint. So yeah, and then I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add this light blue. So that's my cobalt turquoise light. And I'm just going to call that turquoise. So as you can see, this looks very greeny, uh, too greeny perhaps. So I'm going to add a touch of yellow ochre at the top here. Then dab on the rag and I'm going to try and get a bit of a dry brush effect. Doesn't look very dry brush like. Well, at the end, I got a bit. It's good enough. It's good enough. OK, and look at that contrast. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is just beautiful. So that's what you want. And let's keep on working down. So I want to make this a bit stronger though. So I start below and then I work up and that way it blends better. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm using the darker blue as well. Did you notice that? I should have said, I guess I did now. So I'm using the darker blue and touch of this um, amidazoline yellow let's just say yellow and uh, some yellow ochre have to be careful with the yellow ochre it starts to give it a musty look it reminds me of um, wartime uniforms yeah all those musty greens and browns now a problem we're going to have is I'm going to spray this to keep it wet because it's drying out very quickly. I'm just going to make this a bit more of a brighter green at the bottom. Yeah, I tend to darken things in the foreground 
which tends to be the bottom area. I think that adds to the feeling of perspective. Maybe it's a bit like a trick. So here we go. I think that looks lovely. So um, let's spray. Yeah, the problem I might have is the spray might go here and we might get a bit of a speckled effect in the sky. I guess I could put something here, plastic sheet, piece of paper, but I'm not too bothered, to be honest. OK, so we've done that and that's looking pretty good. I think that is, that's done. So now we're going to do these gaps between or these rows in the field. So for that, liner brush and blue, red and yellow ochre, that's all. And I want a thick mix and it's just a case of waiting now for it to dry just a little. Um, so I'm going to begin here because this is where the rows are widest. And when I first put the brush on the uh, paper, the wet paint, that's when it's going to spread the most. And as I go further up here, where we've got thinner rows, it's going to take time to get from here to here, even though a little time. But in that amount of time, it's going to be drying. And so the paint's not going to spread. And because I want a thinner line, then it's best to paint this area last of all. Of course, because when I did this wash, I did this top area first, it's also going to be quite dry anyway. In fact, it looks like it, it really is drying out. So here we go. The first line is the um, most important because this is the one that can really spread and it's not spreading. Maybe I left it too long. Now I don't want this to go all the way up to the top because there's another green area up here. So I want to leave that. Okay. So the angle is slowly changing. And there's a bit down here. Ooh, that's very dramatic. So there's certain things in watercolour painting that you, you cannot teach. Uh, one of them is being bold. I mean, you can suggest, but it just takes a lot of painting experience. And then you, I don't know if it's just from sheer boredom or whatever, but then you sometimes, or by accident, you do something and it's quite a bold result and you learn something as a result and you just develop um, a confidence. So there is a certain boldness that you need when you, paint but I think it just comes with time and I think this is looking quite nice as I go up can you see it's not spreading so much I don't think so in fact it's too dry so I need to spray that so a spray bottle is essential it really is important None of this equipment is for show. It's all vital and um, really important in the painting process. A spray bottle allows you to keep the paint wet and so you can keep working on it. And so you can relax a little bit more you don't have to rush quite so quickly. And sometimes you do need to step back and have a look and, and think. Yeah, so I think that's okay. Now, I know what some beginners are going to do when they do this black bit they're just going to overdo it and cover everything. 
I don't know why, it's just the way the brain works. Um, and you've just got to remember to leave lots of lovely green. It's difficult, it really is. And you have to um, squint and look at it with squinted eyes and see if the overall pattern looks like a field. And the final thing we're going to do, and this is really fun, and um, maybe I should get some, some kind of cover here, just a minute. I guess I'll use this. So, line a brush, get some of this yellow, and we're going to do splatter. And splatter is a lot of fun, and it can actually look fantastic. So, hold this down, and then splatter like that. So I hope you can see this okay. Now I think my yellow is a bit contaminated. It looks a bit greeny. So I think if it was more yellow, it would be even better, but there you go. And can you see that lovely effect? Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. And it gives us a lovely feeling of texture. So I keep forgetting sometimes that I've done this a lot. And if you're a beginner and you're doing this, it can sometimes be at first really frustrating. It's just not happening, the splatter, or it's happening too much. So all I can say is I hold it like this and I just bring my hand down like that. I suppose I'm using my wrist. And then, you know, you stop at the end, a sudden stop. And then hopefully the paint should leave the brush. <laughs> and if it doesn't, then just play around with the mix on your palette, make it maybe a little bit more watery or not quite so watery and just keep practicing until you get the result you would like. Now look at that, I think that looks absolutely lovely. <laughs> that, that is a place where I would be happy to die. <laughs> it looks heavenly. So, um, Let's leave that to dry. Oh, but one very important point. So because we've been splattering, there's a lot of um, paint that's run down and accumulated at the bottom. They might become a cauliflower. So you get your tissue. Can you see how my setup really helps me to paint smoothly? Very important, so important, yeah? So I wipe my brush on the rag and then I just go along the bottom and really I'm, I'm almost not touching the paper and already it's brought up a lot of paint. So wash it out, wipe it again, run along. Oh, it's really, I need to use the tissue because it's really soaking wet here. And I'm just, I'm just touching the bottom edge and I'm not worried about removing paint there because there's paint above that's going to run down and just like add colour back again to the, the white paper or the fainter paint underneath. Yeah, can you see like as I run the brush along it becomes fainter, but paint above is going to run down and it's going to like resaturate that. I'm not quite sure how to express that correctly, but did my best. Okay. So I think that is lovely. Yeah, I think that's really nice. It's just got that feeling, right, of a field. And... I could do little corrections or little additions here, but to be honest, I don't want to do that because although I might be able to get away with that, I think if you try to do that, 
you're you're really you'll probably screw it up. One of the things that I see students do is they they think, oh look here, it looks a bit too straight. I'll rough it up a bit. And in fact, I might do that, but already it's probably close to being dry. So if I did do it, I'd have to use quite a dry mix. And I'm just sure that students would put their brush in the water. Then they wouldn't even touch the rag. And that's, that's well, that's a sin. Okay. <laughs> because you're going to destroy your painting now. And then they get some light black and it's really watery. And then they're going to put it on the paper and then get this explosion. So what you do is a very dry brush. We don't have to worry about it being clean because we're using a dark color and you want really thick, thick mix. That's too watery now, really thick. Maybe I can use a touch, but it's probably too dry. But I decided to do this just to show you because I think maybe now you, you understand what I'm trying to say. But I have to point that out because I see students doing good paintings and then they forget to use the rag and then they put a watery mix onto paint that's almost dry and spoil it. And it's a real tragedy, a real tragedy, not a sin, a tragedy. Okay, that's the right word. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Maybe there, just a little. I don't want to be too finicky because I don't want you to be like that because it, it really will not help you make a good painting and I really want you to make a nice painting. One thing that beginners do a lot is they get really finicky and they just play with it and play with it and as soon as you see that as a teacher you know they're just going to ruin it. Now, if you just look at the way I do this, I'm almost doing it in simple blocks, right? Let's just keep it nice and simple and not get finicky. Anyway, lecture over. I'm going to take a photo of this so you can pause it and you can then have a go, take your time at your own pace. And then when you finish that, let's move on to the next stage. Okay, the paper has dried, or the paint, and uh, now we're going to do these uh, buildings and trees in the midground. They're not easy to see. And I think one of the problems I've got is I've done this too dark. If you look at my previous painting, it is a bit lighter. And so that might be a problem it might end up looking quite opaque. So I'm a little bit concerned about that, to be honest. Another thing I want to do is I want to widen this green area here a bit more because I think it will make the painting look far more interesting. So let's have a go. So what I'm using is my um, pointed oval brush. And I want a dark green. So first I'm going with blue. And you can just use, especially when you're using a very limited palette, limited number of colors, you can use the same mixes again and again, which is very economical, but it's also very useful as well and saves a lot of time. So I'm adding red there, which I shouldn't really because it needs to be mostly blue and yellow ochre. Yeah, and we're getting this kind of dark green. I'm not sure how it looks on the screen, whether you're really picking up the color. Actually, at the moment, it looks quite, um, quite what? At the moment, it just looks quite gray, actually. So um, let's add a lot more blue. Sorry about that noise a moment ago. I completely forgot about it. It's my uh, humidifier. Sorry about that. Okay, 
So there we go. That, that I think is good enough. I'm tempted to add some of this yellow, but I think that's good enough. Okay, now we're going to do the trees first because I think they're the easiest. And what you do is you splay the hairs like this. You twist the brush around, the hairs spread out and you get that kind of effect. And here we go. So yeah, maybe that's not too bad. And that comes down maybe about there. I'm going to make it quite big. Now the hairs come back together again quite quickly. So you have to keep putting it back in the palette and splaying those hairs. Then here, there's a, a bush here. And then here, there's, there's all kinds of stuff along here. Ah, oh, yeah. There's a smaller tree or bush here. Yeah. And then in the background, we've got something here. Not make too much of that because it's background. And then over here, we've got a big tree and maybe this high. So it's really important to splay these hairs. And have that come down. So it's quite big. It's a roundish kind of shape. Trees are. But we can sometimes get lost in details and forget that. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so now we've got over here a building. A bit difficult to see. That's the roof. And then in the distance, we've got some buildings. Just small buildings. And something here. And something here. And it's connected, yeah. Very connected with little gaps, hopefully. And I need to spray it. That's dried out almost. Okay. So over here, we've got some kind of house in the distance. Maybe it's not too bad. And then up here, we've got some kind of, well, down here, we've got some kind of wall. So it needs to be a kind of rough thing, a bit rough. It's a low wall. Try and get a bit of dry brush by moving the brush quickly across the paper. And it is a fairly thick mix as well, which helps. Okay, that looks quite nice. And then I'm going to just pick up this turquoise blue. Doesn't have to be pure blue. And then I'm just going to put that in there. Ooh, it went a bit <laughs> where I didn't want it to go, a bit too high up. Okay, but this is what it's like. Things, once you start painting it all all kinds of things start to happen. And you you find yourself painting by the uh, seat of your pants. Let's spray it. Then I'm getting my liner brush. And this is gonna be a highlight bit now. So I get the yellow and it really is hard. Really is hard. Maybe I need to get another yellow that's doesn't go quite so hard as this one and I'm using my light blue so this for some people this might be a bit of a garish green so if you find it like that apologies but I want it to really stick out and also match this green below and I want it to run down eventually Let's see, we are getting there. And there's this tree in the distance, but really shouldn't worry about that one too much, perhaps. It's in the distance. And then here we go, running down marks like that. I love to do this. It's really, really fun. 
and I think it looks very nice. So, um, I think this was a technique I just kind of invented myself. I could be wrong though. I'm sure somebody else has done it. But doing these streaky lines, I just think it looks really beautiful. Just have to be careful not to do too many though. And I was going to say, oh, and I think that's it. But it isn't because I haven't done the shadows yet. So I'm just giving it a lovely bumpy, a bumpy outside shape, contour. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Um, okay, I think that will do. And then it is time for the shadows. We love shadows. So I'm using this, I want a light purple shadow. So use this turquoise blue, a touch of alizarin crimson. And I'll make this quite watery. And I have to think about direction. So it's going to be like that. And I want it to be quite long because it's an evening shadow. So yeah. And then this other one's going to be going this way. So I have to really be careful with the um, directions of these shadows, yeah? Now, maybe I've made that shadow a bit too long, but I don't mind. And then here we've got a really long shadow here. Really comes right out. And then I'm going to squint my eyes and just have a look and see if it's working. And I think it does. I think it does work. Maybe, wow, outside, super windy. Um, maybe a touch of light green here. That, that could be a mistake. And yeah here was meant to be a wall but I think it's in the wrong place it's too high up so I'm going to change this into some trees in the distance yeah so that's kind of see to the pants thing yeah where you suddenly have to make a decision about things and you didn't expect it and here is another decision like is it yellow enough and I thought mm, maybe not so I'm just using almost pure yellow paint now here but yellow soon changes colour and goes a bit green and so even though I'm kind of mucking up this pure yellow so it's not a, really a pure yellow but it is making the top of these trees just a little bit more yellow and it's good enough yeah it needed that And I don't want to emphasize this tree in the distance too much. I don't want it to be too bright or too much. It is a bit, it's got some flecks of yellow in there that I need to hide. So dark mix, go in and hide them. Okay, I think that's it. I think it looks nice. I think it's got a lovely feeling. To be honest, I was a bit hesitant about continuing with this painting and doing these trees because what I'd done just looked so beautiful. I felt like maybe I should stop. But uh, anyway, I decided to continue. So let's leave that to dry. I'm just squinting my eyes and seeing if it looks fairly okay. The basic light areas are 
pretty okay. Yeah, I suppose there might be a little bit of a greeny thing here. Might be a touch of green here, which you're hardly going to notice, to be honest. That's meant to be a house, but it doesn't look very uh, even, symmetrical. So let's just try and do that again. Okay, I think that's that's quite good. And we have got some tonal difference now. This is quite strong tone and this is a bit fainter and it gives a more of a stronger sense of um, perspective and distance, which is quite good. Well, which is good actually. Okay, just blending this in a bit squinting my eyes, looking carefully. Maybe there's a bit too much paint here. So soak some of that up. Yeah. Part of me is wondering whether to do a fence here. That might look interesting, but I think it's okay. Oh, and here, can you see that buildup of um, paint there? So clean my brush and just wipe that up. We'll get away with it, but that was a bit dangerous. Yeah. Just blend that in. And then maybe just spray it one time. And maybe what I'll do now is I'll turn it and have it run down. Could be a bit safer. Oh, and I think it looks really nice. Yeah, it's got a lovely feeling still. So let's leave that to dry. Then we're going to come back and do the highlights. And I will take a photo so you can have a look at that. You can pause the video and then you can look at that as a reference. Okay, so that has now dried and we're going to do the highlights. So I'm using titanium white and um, a liner brush. Now I'm going to mix this with some of this yellow here. So I'm not using pure titanium white, not at first anyway. And in a way, this is like a, an artificial thing because if you look carefully at the painting, you can't really see much of a rim lighting. Perhaps here, perhaps here, you can see a touch. There are little flecks of white, maybe. As I begin to look, I can start to see them, yeah. There's definitely a bit of white there. I'm not sure if it's pure white. And then um, maybe there's a little bit of white there. So, so I realized I didn't really look at the painting carefully enough. So um, here we go. So I'm resting my hand on the pad. Normally I don't do that, but if you rest your hand on the pad, first of all, you've got to make sure it's dry. That's essential. But if you do rest it on the pad, then it gives you a bit more control. And let's just continue with this. Oh, so Okay, so I'm not happy with that. So this is what you do. It's not a perfect technique, but quickly, I'll try wiping it first. Then I'll get some water and maybe there, use my tissue. You see how I'm doing this? And then I'm going to dab. Now I am going to remove maybe some pigment, but not that much. 
there is actually some pigment removed there but after I've gone over it you're really going to have a tough time seeing that so there you go that's a correction technique and one of the reasons I've got my hand down here on the paper is so that I've got more control and I'm less likely to go way off course okay yeah I think that's passable yeah I'm not sure if I should go a bit thicker with this in some areas. And I've got a bit of a little dry brush effect there, which is quite nice, quite like that. I think that looks quite good. I might just there. Do a little bit, because I'm a little bit unhappy with that shape, but it's good enough. And here, go a little bit thicker. I quite like that. So that maybe is a new technique I've learned, which is not just to do a single line, but to thicken the line a little in various places. It gives it a bit, bit more, makes it more interesting. So it's always good to be experimenting and learning. Hopefully. Yeah, I think that works. I think that looks very nice. Um, and then some touches of white. Okay. I don't really want pure white. I think pure white's going to be a bit too, too strong. So I'm going to add a touch of yellow ochre to this. Just a touch. And I'm just going to have a quick look at this. Yeah, there's a roof here that's catching the light. And there isn't a line going down here, so maybe I won't add one. I want to. <laughs> and there's a few little white things here, like a fence or something. And then there's something down here. These are all nice little interesting marks that, that bring the painting to life. These little bits and bobs. And it becomes fun to do them, but just be careful you don't overdo it. Can you see? Just these little highlights, they're ridiculous. I've, I've even made them up, to be honest, some of them, but they just make a good painting. Gotta be careful here. I don't go too wide with that. So when you do this, really take your time because yeah, it can, you can easily go wrong with this and then you've got to try and remove some and then do it again and what a hassle so i might just do a ridge line here i'm not sure if this is a good idea and here too um, a faint ridge line you can do it you see how i stop and then redo it that's how you can make a straightish line don't try to do it all in one go because if you go wrong, it's really bad. But you can stop, reassess, then do again, then reassess and do again like that. And that's how you can quite easily do a straight line. I think that's basically it. I'm really quite happy with the painting. I, I think the feeling, the atmosphere is absolutely lovely. Um, let's just do some birds because I want to get rid of this black dot. That's the only reason. So blue, red, touch of yellow ochre, bit more red, and that's a looks pretty black. So wipe my brush, here we go. So it's just a one, two, three. And my hand is on the paper, but you do have to be careful not to put it in any wet areas. And let's do again. One, two, three, like that. And then just the finer one down here. One, two, three. 
and that's quite nice. And I want them kind of coming into the painting, not going out, because if they're going out, they will lead the eye out of the painting and you want to lead the eye into the painting. So that looks lovely. Um, I'm not happy with that mark there. So it's okay, it's okay. I'm not one for perfectionism <laughs> because I think perfectionism, especially in watercolour painting, it makes you go very rigid. Um, it's normally being bold and not giving a toss, not giving a toss. I could have put that another way, but not caring almost a kind of arrogant indifference is really good in watercolour painting. Uh, I think that's what we have to be like in order to become as good at art as children sometimes naturally are. Sometimes as an adult, we just have to have that kind of couldn't care less if it worked or not and do something very bold and that's how we create really amazing paintings. Whereas if we try to be perfectionist, sorry about the lecture here, but if we try to be perfectionist, then I think what happens is we get very stiff. It feels like the, the pressure's on. And sadly, instead of that lifting us up to greater heights, I think it makes us kind of uh, tense up and not produce such amazing work. What I think, the way in which we can achieve, I don't like the word excellence, but brilliant paintings or amazing paintings is just to paint and keep on painting and having fun. And then they just now and again pop out. Pop, there you go, amazing painting. It's just turning up and painting and enjoying it. And then eventually the excellence comes, doesn't, doesn't stay. <laughs> <laughs> can be a bit hard sometimes because the excellence can just disappear and you'll have to get used to that in the future but it does come back again which is the nice thing okay so sorry about that little lecture but hopefully you'll find that helpful I don't quite like this thing here there it is important though to be honest with yourself and that's not always easy so to look at your work and say, well, am I really happy with it? But in a nice way, not not simply just to be nice to yourself, but if you're really hard on yourself, then you're going to not want to do the painting again. So it's just good to be able to look at what you've done and say, well, what am I really happy about? What what really works? But anyway, I'll talk about that in the crit. And then just to think, well, what am I not happy with? And then if you can correct it now, then do it. Like I'm not happy with that for some reason. So I'm just going to do that. I think that looks a little bit better now. So to be like that is a good way to be. OK, so let's stop there. Now, the final thing I'm going to do is my signature. So uh, at some point I'm going to do a video on signing your work because it's such an interesting topic in my opinion. But anyway, I'm using a liner brush but normally I use another brush and uh, I'll show you what that is in a future video. But um, I said only three brushes in this video so I'm just going to use three but I find that even though this is a liner brush, it doesn't always give such a thin line. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do it here. And here we go. Start there, do a little dot, go along. I do a very simple signature. Go up, come down slowly, up again and down. So I recommend you practice doing your signature on um, scrap paper and it's going to take a while to get good at it. So always practice doing your signature. I know it might seem a bit vain, 
but you'll be kicking yourself so much if you do a beautiful painting and when you go to sign it, you screw it up, you'll be so upset. But what you can do is you can uh, wipe it out again with some water. So, but you do have to be careful. If it's a dark area, you might shift the paint. So there we go. It's a bit of a different colour, but I do mine G and Gareth Naylor, but can you see how it's kind of abstract? Um, and it's almost like a mirror uh, image. And I just like that kind of design because I don't think words and images really go together, in my own opinion. And my real signature is the painting. Not, not this, but, you know, there are the demands of society. And it is helpful. People like to see it. So I've got a white gap here. And I'm going to show you what I do with that. So wet around here, just a little, so we don't shift paint. Get some of this thick green and just go in like that. And we can even add a little bit of this black, dab, dab, dab on the rag. And look at that, make it disappear. Looks lovely, right? So, and maybe down here as well, just blacken that a little and it just gives it a nice edge it's probably not important but sometimes i like to do that and there we go finished okay we've finished the painting and now it's time just to have a, a look a relaxed look and just what do we feel so me i'm very i'm very happy with this painting um the atmosphere, the mood is lovely and it, it really does capture the beautiful mood of that moment when I was in this rice field, wandering around, really enjoying this beautiful autumn evening. And I think it really does capture that. So let's become a little bit more analytical. So the sky is lovely, but I can see lines here. So I think, oh, and I just realised I didn't do the uh, posts. So this is a good, a good reason why you should um, look at your work and review it or do a little critique of it because I can't believe I didn't do these. Okay, there's one. Two, and I'm going to make it a little bit different from in the picture because in the picture it goes horizontally across but I don't think that's so good because it's not a barrier but it just looks a bit a bit boring actually by having it coming more towards us it's a little bit more interesting so make sure I'm going to get a thin line here so I've used the rag a bit to get rid of excess paint you really need to practice doing these lines on scrap paper before you do it here there so we got that done okay let's continue so there's a few lines here now i could get rid of it i could wet it again and then do that again okay and why why not do that just now uh, but the mistake i made was when i did the sky I did the blue at the same time and I should have I should have left that and I should have done the mountains that's when I wet it again and that's where these marks come from and then after I'd done the mountains I should have wet this corner just the corner and then done the blue if that makes sense do the blue after the mountains and after that's dried the mountains wet this little area here and then do that's what I should have done. So, so this is why it's good to do a critique. I don't like the word critique, do you? But we'll use it for now because you're developing your process and you, you're doing it to improve your work and understand what's going on in your work better. 
and it's you're doing it in a more in a logical way yeah not like uh, am i a good artist or a bad artist no 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 nothing like that but like what really worked getting analytical yeah so even just wetting that now i think has improved it okay so that could be um some kind of a bit skewed thinking there but i do think it looks a little bit better already and then get the blue and i'm just going to go into this again and i've no idea what this is going to look like because i've never done this like this before like a second time can i get rid of that line maybe not completely but maybe I can soften it a bit. And there we go. And here, I've got to get rid of that. So wet my brush, clean it out. And let's just go here and wipe up that. That looks a bit dirty. Maybe I should have used cleaner water. Okay. Okay, there we go. And that's a kind of clean up routine. I think that looks better. Yeah. So sometimes when you do this critique, it's really good because you actually there and then can do something to improve the painting. So I think that looks marvellous now. <laughs> okay, sounds a bit vain. But okay, I think it looks a lot better than before. So I'm happy with the mountains. I'm happy with these hills in the foreground maybe it was all a bit too strong this edge i wish it wasn't so furry although maybe it does look a bit like that so that might even be more realistic um and i possibly wish it was a bit more of a warm reddish color just under the sun so that would be even better because the sun is catching it i think that would really look good but I'm not going to add that now because I think it would be difficult to do, to be honest. I would get caught up with this and I might shift paint around and it might start to look ugly. Whereas at the moment it's all beautiful and there's no ugly marks in it. So, so I am happy with that. I think it's a fairly soft line. Just it's all a bit tonally dark. I think it works, but I still think it's quite dark. I might want to make it slightly more fainter and like I said here a bit more of an orange tint here okay so next this foreground I absolutely love this I think this is wonderful possibly I could go a bit more crazy here <laughs> just for fun and make it into something almost abstract and that could be good um, then this middle ground I'm really happy with that. Maybe this looks a little bit scrappy. I'm being quite severe there, I think, but I like this thicker mark that I've done, but maybe here just a bit too much. But I like this contrast between a thin line and then a thicker bit, which is a bit more dry brush-like. And I think it looks nice. And this looks nice. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this and this lovely gap here. And I think these posts, whatever utility poles look fine. The birds are fine. So perhaps one thing I could add, but I'm not going to, is a figure here. And he could have like a white hat and the sun could be catching that white hat and the eye would just focus on that figure right there. Whereas I think with this painting, maybe the eye goes somewhere around here. I'm not sure. You let me know what you think in the comments because it's really interesting to know what other people see and other people think. And uh, it's actually very enlightening. Um, and that's it really. And uh, I'm quite happy with my signature, but this white is a little bit brighter than this white, but only a bit. I'm not too bothered about that. And I think 
in the future, I'll try and get my frames and just put a small frame around this and show you what it looks like because it's so important once you start to do quite good paintings to put them in frames. You'll be so surprised by how beautiful it can look. So there you go. Okay, I hope you had a good time and I hope you did a nice painting. I thought I'd show you some of the other versions that I did. Well, they're not different, but these are some of the other paintings I did of the same scene. And the final painting that you saw me do, I put in a frame. So here you go. And that's what it looks like. One of the big problems with watercolour paintings is when you put them behind a glass frame, you get reflection. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that, but I think it looks nice. And uh, hopefully you can see it fairly well. So there we go. I hope you had a good time and uh, I'll be back again in a week or two with another painting to do. So bye for now and happy painting.